So we'll start right in, and what we're going to do is I'm going to start you out. You know what? I'm going to get a little closer into the mic to the uh, camera here because that camera's a little too far away for you guys. Whoa! Over the edge. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, first of all, I'm going to suggest to you, if you do not, you don't have to have a flute right now, but it would be helpful if you did. The simplest way to get started is to work with a soprano first. And I want to point out that I started with a, <laughs> I started with a $2,000 soprano recorder not through my own personal choice, but because that's what Morgan had left me. And um, so the very first thing I did was I got myself a plastic recorder so that I wouldn't risk the $2,000 wood recorder without knowing what I was doing. So, so there, it's very tricky. There are things you need to know before you play a wood recorder. A plastic recorder, if something goes wrong with it, you can throw this into the dishwasher, not just anywhere in the dishwasher, the top part of the dishwasher, you know, where the delicate stuff goes. And you can actually wash these things out in your dishwasher and get rid of all the gunk in there. So I found several types of plastic recorders and I read a number of articles. I read about, oh, probably two or three dozen articles on the care and feeding of recorders. One of the things that everybody agrees upon is that a plastic recorder, until you get to the level of about $1,000, a plastic recorder is perfectly adequate. It will do the same job as a recorder that is worth 200 300 400 500 dollars and so forth. The exception to that is if you have a recorder available to you that costs less than a thousand dollars that actually has that high quality sound, which is why I have obtained pearwood recorders at only four hundred dollars. But you have to realize that that is a very unusual recorder. You have to be able to select your recorder from a variety of recorders that are available to you. So, that having been said, I started with a $2 recorder. It's a beautiful little recorder. It's only, it's not $2, I think it's 4 but it means, you know, 4 5 It's, 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 I call it a $2 recorder, you know, because it's really cheap. It's a Lyons, L-Y-O-N-S. R50 and it comes with a cleaner and a case and it's a three piece recorder my god you i mean you what can you do better than that for the for the you know ridiculously small amount of money here's the case it comes with genuine plastic case and doesn't it have a little plunger in it too yeah it has a little plunger yeah, a little stick. Yeah, how do you use those? How do you use it? Well, you put something in it, like a piece of flannel. One of the things that you never, ever do is ram, even in plastic, you never ram anything up the mouthpiece like this because uh, you will actually destroy the mouthpiece even in a plastic instrument. So you have to actually respect that labium it's called, which is the lip, right here. This is the little thing there. And then up inside there, there's this thing, this little chuck in there that you don't want to hit it. When it's wood, it's horrible. You've destroyed the instrument. Now let me see if I can get some sound out of this thing. You know, all that having been said, maybe I can't even get sound out of this. First thing I'm going to do is cover all the holes and try to get a sound. Now, if I blow too hard, I get that. If I blow too softly, I get that. 
that. So I've covered all the holes, and all I'm going to do now is just go up and down these. I'm going to move my fingers off the holes, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. What you'll notice I'm doing is I'm playing with the holes to discover what the tuning is. Now, this is very important. For recorder, I would have to know how to get perfect true C. I'd have to know how to get a perfect C sharp. C minus. Now that's actually not a C minus. But how to get flats and sharps. How to get in between the notes. That's what that means. Flats and sharps are positions between the notes. So there are certain things you'll never need to know with Zen flute. That's one of the things you'll never need to know. It's just that you should be aware that those things do exist. For you. Now, I'm going to play the two buck chuck, which is the Lions, the little Lions R50. It's a two dollar instrument or four dollar, five dollar, whatever it is. It's cheap. It's a cheapo instrument. It's two buck chuck. So I'm going to play a little bit of it here, and let's just see how far I can get with this here. In terms of intonation, now watch. Listen carefully. I'm going to just play it the way you would normally start out. Okay. Now, it's a piece of plastic. Recycled dinosaur. This has been on the planet for at least... 250 to 500 million years at least sitting underground in an oil reserve and it got processed through a plastics plant petroleum plant first obviously and then as a petroleum byproduct it got turned into this beautiful little totally recyclable recorder or zen flute it is recyclable. It, it might take a few billion years, but it, I guarantee that four and a half to five billion years from now, this will no longer be in the condition it's in. It's just a question of time. Everything recycles. It's just a question of time. So I'm going to play it now and see if I can get a little intonation into it. Let's go to the next register. You agree that a two dollar, a two buck chuck will work, right? Okay. 
I just wanted to mention that. I wanted to show you that because I don't want you to give me an excuse that you have a two-buck chuck and that's why it sounds so lousy. It isn't the instrument, it's you. Now, I have here in my hands not two-buck chucks. These are $50, beautiful $50 plastic recorders. Um, they're almost exactly identical in terms of sound, but this one looks like olive wood, and this one looks like rosewood. They appear to be trimmed in ivory, which is exactly what the originals were. They were trimmed in ivory, but this is not ivory. This is what is called plastique. It's a fancy French word for plastic, recycled dinosaur. I'm going to first play this one, which is the rosewood style. sounding isn't it and to be sure it does sound better than the two buck chuck doesn't it you can hear it it's got a better resonance to it as a better quality to it this is the olive wood this is my personal favorite and i'm going to show you what this sounds like So we'll do a little bit of note bending that the other instruments will not do. Now your ear is kind of tuned. You're kind of getting used to hearing this. And I'm going to give you a benchmark to work toward. The benchmark is the sound that I can make with this. And I'm going to give you that as a challenge, as a goal for you to get to. And uh, I realize, and you should realize, that you cannot get there with your two-buck chuck. Now, I'm going to use, yeah, my, I'm going to use my pseudo olive wood. It is a Yamaha. Now, listen carefully to the sound. Going to go to the higher register. Keep that sound in your memory. I'm now going to play a Von Huna. Rosewood, three-piece soprano, $2,000 instrument. Actually, now they're $2,700, the same instrument. This is um, handmade, and it is the equivalent of a Stradivarius in terms of the quality of sound.
Now the higher register, this is where it makes the biggest difference. Can you hear the difference? For those of you who have, well, I'll play the alto for you briefly, just to introduce you to the sound. register so and um, this is a pretty interesting instrument it started as a Yamaha it's a lot heavier. It weighs about three times the uh, what the other one weighs. What's the difference between the alto and the soprano? First of all, the soprano has higher tones. You notice that. Now, if you hear an alto singer and a soprano singer, doesn't the soprano singer have a higher voice? Right. So there's a soprano, alto, tenor, baritone, bass. Soprano! Actually, there's more than soprano. There's sopranino, which is even higher than soprano. But we're not going to go there because it's like a dog whistle. <laughs> soprano is a beautiful instrument. Soprano flute. It's a beautiful instrument. And it's easy to play. It's a lot easier to play than the alto. The alto is a little tougher. But the alto, I think, is a more pleasing instrument because there's so many rich tones that you can get out of it. And it goes with a lot more things. This is the Pearwood Alto, and I think this is the sweetest, most beautiful sound this side of $1,000. You hear the difference between this and the plastic? <laughs> I hope so. to go further, a little bit further. Because I want you to understand what you're dealing with here. I'm going to demonstrate to you a thousand dollar instrument. This is the lowest level ordinarily except for the pair this is the lowest level of wood I would even bother with 
And actually, if you want a professional instrument, it's going to cost you between $2,000 and $8,000. Just as it would if you were buying a guitar, or if you're buying a bass, or if you're buying a piano, uh, or you're buying a trombone, or a, or a, a, a cornet, or a saxophone, you're going to pay 2000 to $8,000 for a decent instrument, not a great one. A great instrument? Sure. A uh, guitar, a great guitar, $150,000 to $300,000. A great violin, between $3 million and $15 million. Well, how in the world do people do The way they do it is the way that uh, uh, Jerry's dad did, which is that uh, you get some doctors, dentists, lawyers, architects to back you. They buy your violin, they buy your instrument for you, and then you are a corporation. And so most of the first violinists are actually corporations, corporate souls, corporation souls, and they actually issue stock in themselves. And then they get jobs in the great orchestras, and that is shared among the people who, are, who own them through the instrument. Uh, in many cases, uh, for instance, in his case, he, he owned a violin bow that was worth more than most people's homes. Just the bow. The case itself was, could put a kid through college. Just the case. And the violin itself, you could buy a downtown business building, office building, for the same amount of money. Just realize. So uh, I'm going to play for you a $1,000, which is a low-end wood instrument. This is boxwood. And it is the lowest end that I would even consider other than the pear wood. The pear wood is great because it, it actually is a wonderful breath regulator for sound. This is the instrument you want. Touching on a third register, there's a third register on this little sucker. It's uh, it's it's got more reach than the other ones have. Still, it's not really there. I have other instruments that I'm not going to tease you with because the other instruments would cost you between two thousand and eight thousand dollars. I'm just not going to tease you with those. They're meant for professional use. I use them professionally, and I don't recommend them for casual use. $1,000 for an instrument is an awful lot unless you're using it in a very serious way. This has gold keys on it. The reason it has gold keys on it is because gold doesn't oxidize. Therefore, it uh, it wears better. Um, when they do begin to go, the simplest solution is to take it off, send it into the factory. They remake one for you and send it back. Uh, they like to actually have the entire instrument sent to them, and then they, they just remake one for you. That's your little foot. It's called a foot, and it gives you your F, and it depends on what 
what it's tuned to. <clears throat> the uh, flutes that I use are tuned to 440A, meaning that there are there's a number of definitions of the of the uh, the note A, and all of the notes following the note A. There's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and of course the note H, which nobody can play. And so 440A is the modern standard in the West. Is it the standard everywhere? Not at all. 412, 424, 431. Uh, there are a variety of, of, of um, frequencies. Those are called frequencies that are denoted as A, and it depends on whether you play Baroque music, which I hate, or modern music, which I equally detest, or Zen music, which I love, which is whatever. And uh, that's at four, I play it at 440, I recommend 440. There's a variety of reasons why that's nice, one of which is you can play with other instruments. Whereas when you have a totally Baroque instrument, you can only play with other Baroque instruments. Which means you have to know people who typically spend their evenings reading Chaucer in the original Middle English. Which I do, but, uh, but only on occasion. I'm talking about every evening. This is a tenor. And um, the reason that the tenor is so nifty is because it's really nifty. And this is a lot harder to play. It takes a lot more breath to play this. And it's the sweetest sounding instrument this side of heaven. Here you go. register. A little hard. What you have to do is play it a little while. About 15 minutes into it and the high register starts to kick in. It's too dry for the high register. But anyway, that's the tenor. And it's a very sweet instrument. Beautiful, low instrument. And of course, there's also baritone and bass. And some of the bass instruments are actually 20 feet tall. What you have is a piece of plastic that is a two-buck chuck, pretty much. Some of you have better instruments than that. Many of you got the thing I recommended for beginners, which is the double set, which you have a soprano and an alto. So... So far, all we've done is examine the instrument and see what it sort of does. I'm going to come in a little closer here. Ah! There. Whoa! <laughs> there you go. That's funny. I can see it after I do it. See? Because of the little bit of lag there. I'm going to use, um, I should use the two buck chuck for this, but it, I'll use this guy here, which is as close to the two buck chuck as I have anymore. I've given away my two buck chucks to folks who are in dire need, some of whom are sitting here, <laughs> still in dire need, but they have a two buck chuck now. So this is a plastic device. It's a plastic tube. And all it is, don't forget, is a pipe. It's a piece of plumbing. Now, I want you to notice something about it, that unlike ordinary plumbing, it's a PVC pipe, basically. Wait, I'll wait. 
the wooden flutes you get from me. If you want a wooden flute, talk to me. Tell me which kind of wooden flute you want. Um, in a few minutes, I'll demonstrate, if you like, I can demonstrate. Well, I can do it. Let's do it. Let's, let's pull the other flutes out here, and I'll demonstrate them while we're here. I'll do it. This is the most amazing flute. This is a this is um, tulip wood. It's called tulip wood. And finding a piece of wood big enough to make this is apparently a significantly difficult task. And this is the, I'll play the tulip wood for you now. This is significantly different. It's clear, it has a beautiful, rich tone, and it is a $1,700 instrument. It's a strange wood, grenadilla. It's kind of like an olive wood, it's very hard, very heavy very rich toned and this one I have to warm up really significantly this is actually the most expensive recorder I would ever consider buying I didn't consider buying it. I wasn't going to buy it at all. And then I realized that, magically speaking, I had to because I wanted to produce some pieces that were extraordinarily different and that required a specific type of vibration. This produces exactly that kind of magical vibration. But you're talking $3,000 $4,000, $5,000 for these instruments. Depends on how what you want. It depends on the configuration of these things. They come in different configurations. It's a $4,000 instrument. Is it worth it? No, it isn't worth it. Unless you are recording specifically or performing in vocational music where you must have a certain vibrational level. And that is what this does. I'll put this together for you. I don't play this very often, and I, I treat it with the utmost care and respect. The three greatest recorder artists described this instrument as the greatest recorder ever made 
in history, bar none. Bar none. That's whether it was made in the 16th century, 15th century, 17th, 18th century. Bar none. This is the best ever made. This is the kit that I recommended, and it's uh, made by Aulos. And this kit here is about, I don't know, $75. I think this is what this is here with all the shipping and everything. It's probably about that. And it has an alto and a soprano in it. This is the Aulos soprano. Okay, I just wanted to demonstrate that. Uh, if you want a wood uh, a wood device, then you need to ask me f to find out for you. Give me a price figure that you'd like to pay, and I will find you the very, very best flute I can find at that price. Okay? Tell me what you want to spend. I will find something for you that is absolutely as gorgeous as you can possibly get. I will test it out. If it works to my satisfaction, I will then clean it, send it on to you, and it'll be yours. Okay? Simple as that. Uh, I don't want you to go out and range around and try to buy one of these things because there's no way in the world that you know what you're looking for. Because it's not just the sound of the flute. It is also the feel, what happens when it puts the breath back into your body. That's what happens. When you blow into these things, you get back breath. It goes back in. Do you know that? Like back EMF, back electromagnetic force, same thing. This, then, is... I'm going to give you your assignment for the next week. And what I'm going to have you do is... It's going to sound awfully stupidly simple, but I believe me, you're going to be um, very challenged just to do what I'm asking you to do here. <laughs> it's a discipline, and it's a discipline that if you lose one day, you'll lose a whole week. Not now, but by the, when you get into it, if you lose a day's work, it's like losing a week. Right now, it won't hurt you, but it will eventually. So I want you to get the discipline of playing five minutes every day. Let me hear you one more time here for 10 seconds. Ready? I'll tell you when to go. Not yet. And take a breath. Not a deep breath, but do take a breath before you blow out. Before you exhale, take a breath. Breathe in. Ready? Go. Okay. Good. Now, once again, in closing, I'm going to leave you with this thought. Think well on that. <laughs> and that is your goal. That's where you're going to. So you actually can, you're at the, at, the, uh, at the foot of the mountain right now. You're at the bottom of the mountain. And you're looking up, but you can at least see where you're going. 
You know where you're going. You know where you're starting from. And it's just a question of getting there from here. Okay? All right, next week, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. <laughs>